It's the National Football League on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the NFC North. It's the Packers and the Vikings on Monday night. U.S. Bank Stadium holds just under 70,000 spectators, and they come out in full force for this one. A fantastic atmosphere here in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago, when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Green Bay Packers. Brandon God alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. And CD, our quarterbacks, is taking center stage here for each of their respective offenses. Aaron Rodgers of the Packers, Kirk Cousins of the Vikings. And Brandon, I think each one might be trying to play some form and keep away from the other because when you think about time of possession and what that means in a game, it's great if you're able to hold on to the football and run your offense at your pace. And it also helps to keep the other guy's offense on the sideline. That's your goal for the game. This will be a touchback. We, we get our first look now at Aaron Rodgers in his 17th season now with the Green Bay Packers. And of course, coming off a great 2020 where he took home the MVP trophy. I think Aaron Rodgers is one of the poster boys for persistence and belief in self. Because coming out of high school, he had zero scholarship offers in the D1 level. Went to a junior college, went to Cal, and just blew up there. And then, of course, he's a first-round draft pick but a lot lower than what he expected in the first round. And then had to sit behind Brett Favre for a few years in Green Bay before getting his shot. Now he's probably one of the better quarterbacks that we've seen come down the pipe. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Now Rodgers. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. Able to find Lazard. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards, the final tally. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? He will stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Rodgers with a give, it's Aaron Jones. He won't find a ton of space following the display of power as he's down just inside the 45. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 38. It's a six-yard run, leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up. They'll 
try and run for it with Jones. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. So from the 36 now, first and 10. The give is to Jones. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. 11 yards and a Green Bay Packer first down. One thing that I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, with that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Now a first down carry by Jones. Heck of a broken tackle, but only able to work this down near the 23. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Throwing on second and eight. Rodgers. No to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. There for the sack, Emerson Griffin. And when you think of the Vikings, you think of a team that brings a lot of pressure to the quarterback, but a surprise in 2020. Only 23 sacks as a unit last year, so they're in need of bigger production from their pass rush in 2021. Remember, last year's numbers, they were in the bottom five in the NFL. No way they want a repeat of that. Rodgers now, after the sack, he'll lead the pack up on third and long. Now Rodgers. And that is incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. As my dad used to tell me all the time, when you're going ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. And Crosby puts it through, and the Packers are off to a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. kickoff duties taken in at the three and he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25 yard line the Minnesota offense ready to go to work here and their quarterback in his 10th season overall now and fourth is a Viking Kirk Cousins and one nice thing you can always say about Kirk Cousins is that he's consistent always puts up nice numbers each and every year if there is a downside to his game it's been the lack of playoff success all in all though formidable starting quarterback at a time in the league where it's tough to find your franchise guy and running on first down is Cook, but he didn't find much there. Call it a gain of three, second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. On oh, second down, it's Cook again. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. It looks 
looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It's a nine-yard gain, and it'll keep the drive moving. So, Charles, defensively here, you're going up against a veteran quarterback. He's got a lot of know-how, a ton of savvy, but a guy who's not the most mobile of quarterbacks. What's the plan of attack? You spend all week pumping up your defensive front. Your defensive tackles, your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys who go after the quarterback the most because you know that he's not going to run and beat you consistently throughout the game. You can rush more aggressively off the edge and even up the middle because even if he evades you, he's not going to go very far. You have a lot more confidence going after him in the pocket. Room here to run. 20, 10, touchdown, Vikings. Dalvin Cook, 60 yards. And the Vikings have taken the lead. Boy, the word with Dalvin Cook is explosiveness. I'm not sure there's anybody in the league that has the acceleration that he does, and he put it to good effect there. And what was impressive to me is not just how much he wanted it, but how he fashioned it. I mean, he was shedding tacklers left and right, evading tacklers left and right. I mean, you think about the energy it takes to ward guys off, that's really impressive. He still managed to keep his balance and turn this into a fantastic run. And he covered a lot of ground on that one, as evidenced by the final total there on Next Gen Stats. Extra point right down the middle, and that makes it a 7 3 lead. Touchdown. Let's take it in at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20 yard line as he's down at the 19. Green Bay's offense, here they come again. And Charles Aaron Rodgers in 2021 will be going for a fourth MVP after getting his third last season. And he is back again. It seems to be a story that is developing these last couple of years as Aaron <laughs> Rodgers and how stable he is there in Green Bay. But I know the Packer fans, they're happy to have him back. They should be thrilled to have him back. And what's interesting about it, Brandon, is it doesn't matter whether it appears stable or unstable. Aaron Rodgers produces. You remember last year there was all that discussion and talk? And he won the MVP. Maybe you want to keep him angry. I don't know, but it works pretty well for Green Bay. The big thing for them is, can they continue to take the ball away and even increase that on the defensive side? They change coordinators, and I think that their corner, Jair Alexander, is an absolute star in the making. Now a throw here, hold in. That catch good for five. It's third down. And that is incomplete. Oh, he did everything to hold on to him. But a nice play defensively, and now it brings up fourth down. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. On fourth down, on is Corey Bahork as to punt. K.J. Osborne deep for Minnesota. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They start the drive with Cook. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. 
While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Cousins gives way to Cook. Oh, nice move. And this will be a Vikings first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. 77 yards rushing for him now as he has gotten the night off to a hot start. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating him up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. First down, here's the run with Cook. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. On second down, Cook. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. The Packers bringing in an extra member of the secondary here to try for the third down stop. Cousins to throw it. He's going to float this one deep right side. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense. And now they get to turn it back to their offense. Now Jordan Berry on to kick this one away. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Packers offense set to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays for one of your better players. And maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. the gun. It's Rodgers. And Rodgers is going to go down. He's sacked. And Daniel Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. The Packers with the football here to begin the second quarter. The Packers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is going to be third and 13. To throw is Rodgers. He gets this to Devontae Adams. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Thank you. 
On now is the Packers punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Oh, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and give these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> Watch that leverage on this drive. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Call that a very strong gain of 24. And Viking fans spent plenty of time wondering how they were going to replace Stephon Diggs when he left for Buffalo. But I think most would agree now that Justin Jefferson was the best rookie receiver in football last year. 88 catches for an even 1,400 yards. I would say the numbers don't lie. On first and 10, Cousins. Open man here is Conklin. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Seven yards there and a first down. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets him up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Handoff comes to Cook. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. The good run on first down followed up by a not so good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. 101 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in his first half. And that's why Dalvin Cook is the Minnesota Vikings feature back. You put the ball in his hands, good things happen. Second in the NFL last year in rushing with 1,557 yards, and that's now back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons with 30 combined total touchdowns. What a player is Dalvin Cook. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Now an end around his Cousins will just pop this forward. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. Well, we've talked about it before. You know, this jet sweep, something a lot of teams like to run nowadays, and this one winds up in the end zone. And it is all about creating different ways to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And wasn't it interesting that prior to this game, head coach told us, I saw this sitting in my chair watching a Tuesday night college game and decided to implement it myself. Extra points safely through. 
Joseph tees it up to kick off, holding the touchdown. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Out comes Devontae Adams in the offense for their next drive. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far, just a single catch in this game. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Shotgun now for Rodgers. That's complete to Lazard. Rodgers teaming up with Lazard there for a Packer first down. A first down catch for Alan Lazard has turned out to be a personal favorite of quarterback Aaron Rodgers. He's carved out a nice role in this Packers receiver rotation. So first and 10 now from the 30. A give to Jones. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. 47 yards on the ground for him so far. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? From the 36, Rodgers. He finds Randall Cobb with a completion. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Rodgers to Cobb, good for a Green Bay first. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window, he fired a bullet in there for the completion. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. At the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to the huddle feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And here's Jones again on second down. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 44. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Packers on third down, two for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Slant to Adams. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Rodgers finding Adams for a Packer first. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. And give him six yards here as he's stopped near the 35 at the 34. 
And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Working with his second and four. They'll run it with Jones. And he'll go down at the 28. Consecutive runs of six yards gives him a first and 10. First down at Green Bay. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. A throw complete to the tight end, Tunyon. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Here's Rodgers to throw. This one complete to Tunyon underneath. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll make this a second and long. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. <laughs> to throw again on second down. Rodgers. He's got Tunyon complete over the middle. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Viking 16. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Pass, catch, first down for Tunyon. Undrafted at Indiana State, but he really came on in 2020. 52 catches and even more importantly, 11 touchdowns. The first red zone opportunity now for the Packers. They come up first and 10 at the 16. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And again, it's Rodgers. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Now it's Rodgers. This one swung out here to Jones. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. someone just added to his touchdown passing total but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way on is mason crosby for the point after And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. That drive a long one, spanning 15 plays. And it ends with a Packers touchdown.
Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. Amir Smith-Marset now from his end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Dalvin Cook taking the field for the Vikings' next possession. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision. And that's caught inside the 45. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now Cousins. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And this one is incomplete. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Working out of the gun, Cousins. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had it and dropped it. That is an unforced error there, and it takes away what could have been a touchdown. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. That's to Cook out of the backfield. Not at all what they envisioned on third down, three yards in the wrong direction. I really like the angles that the tacklers came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cutback. The sideline's there, so you can only go so far outside, and they were able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they used your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline, he knows something. He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport stake. ready to get their next drive underway. And with eight seconds on the clock, really not a lot of time to try to put anything together. And they run with Jones on first down, but he'll struggle here just to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. It was Dalvin Cook who did the job in that first half. First up though, a look at the next gen stats for the Packers in that first half. And they were able to have a little bit of success on the ground. The question will be, will they stick with it? Or will they be throwing more to try and regain this lead? Meanwhile, for the Vikings, by comparison, they've been the better of these two sides in the rushing department, as you see the numbers there. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. second half 
And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Vikings set to go on offense to begin the third quarter. And they've got the lead, CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there, and that'll bring up second down. But you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those, but the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. Second and ten. Here's Cousins. That one complete to D.D. Westbrook. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride. And he was able to run free after the catch. They'll run on first down. It's Cook. Good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Second down, they go right back to Cook. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, hey, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. So just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Rob has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. They'll try to throw now. Cousins. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. They could not contain Kenny Clark as he gets home for the sack. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. Back quite a ways here, facing second and 19. A give, this is Cook. A broken tackle on the run, and then just on the other side of midfield, they get to it. They get five yards on the run there, still left staring at a third and about 14. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Now Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides, and there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And 
And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Here's the Packers offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense him saying, OK, the first half was theirs. But now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for the second half. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. But Charles, we got a second here. Let's talk about rookies this year in 2021 and who really sticks out. It, on the offensive side, everyone always looks at quarterbacks, but Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones, probably the headliners. Yeah, rightly so. Zach Wilson will go in there as well because all three will have the ball from game one. Najee Harris is a runner with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase's receivers with Philadelphia and Cincinnati. I'm going with Mac Jones because I think he's going to get his team to the playoffs after a year's absence. And he was kind of the unlikely guy to be the starter right out of the gate. And he's getting the ball right from the beginning. All right, so you've got him as your offensive rookie of the year. How about the defensive side? Well, I love Micah Parsons with Dallas as a linebacker. He's been a starter since the moment they drafted him. How about J.C. Horn and Pastor Tan as cornerbacks? Greg Rousseau is a pass rusher with the go. Buffalo Bills. And go. that's where I'm going with my defensive rookie of the year, Greg Rousseau. Double-digit sacks as a rookie powers the Bills back to another big playoff appearance. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. To throw, it's Rodgers. He's going to air one out. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Robert Tunyon, the intended target, but it's going to be second down. I'm looking at this one with my defensive eyeglasses on because you remember the old days when a tight end saw a linebacker covering him and thought he had a mismatch? But the way they can run nowadays, not necessarily so. They gave it a shot downfield. That one incomplete. On second down, it's Jones. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Rodgers on third down. And that will be incomplete. They weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. On now is the Packers punter as he's on here to punt it away. Now Osborne to return it. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense back on the field. The lead is theirs here in the third quarter, but it's really been the ground game that's been the recipe for success. You mean the spotlight isn't shining as brightly on the guy throwing it? No, it's the man behind him that's had a heck of a game. And that's really okay. That's actually what you're looking for. I mean, your pride tells you, hey, I want to be responsible. I want to throw a bunch of touchdown passes. But when you're able to run the football, typically speaking, your team's doing pretty well. And in this case, they're winning. We'll see if they have balance on this drive. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Again, it's Cook. And for one of the first times all night, he is going to go nowhere as they bury him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Oh. 
And let's see the Packers defensively six DBs, so a dime look on third. Could play coverage or bring pressure. From the gun, here's Cousins. They're going for Jefferson downfield. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he will have the Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that looked almost to be a case of, you know, a quarterback saying, hey, I'm going to throw this as far as I can and hope you run under it. Mission accomplished. And what was amazing to me was the fact he was able to get as much on the ball as he did because he was on the run. Normally, when you're on the move like that, you don't expect the ball to go that far. You would think you need your lower body to be involved. That was an all-arm throw. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, from my vantage point, that's just one bad play by the offensive line and a running back who's had a lot of good ones tonight. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he's not going to be ticked off, nor is the offensive line, because to me it's a lot like a no-hitter, right? Pitcher's throwing a no-hitter, gives up a hit late. You're so close to accomplishing everything you want and don't quite get it done. They'll come back with a vengeance on the next play. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. All right, all right, all right. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. The good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And complete right side to Cook. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Joseph's got it. And that holds him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. here they find themselves down 17 10 as they come up on a first and 10 they'll start the drive with a carry by Jones looking for a cutback lane but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage tackle made by Eric Kendricks they tried to run it to the short side of the field. There just wasn't a whole lot of room to work with. Yeah, it seems like things just kept getting strung out towards the sideline, and it kept looking for a spot to dive up into the gap. There just wasn't one, so that turned into nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And no gain. Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and 10 coming up. They'll go again to Jones. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time he hand the ball to a back. Rodgers 
going to throw. And Rodgers is going to go down. He's sacked. Daniil Hunter with a big time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys that they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. On oh, the return is Osborne. A 39-yard punt, a return of five. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Dean Lowry able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. to Minneapolis. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Vikings on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and forever. Throwing, Cousins. And that's gonna be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Barry on to punt as he gets this one away. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. Green Bay's offense ready to go again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. And some play callers, when they go into games, they don't mind calling a lot of screens and they don't care what down. They were maybe one block away from really having something there to start this drive. Good job defensively to cut through the blockers and make the tackle on the screen, or that could have gone for maybe 15 or 20 yards. Looking to throw again on second down. Rodgers, he'll get this to Lazard. Four yards the pick up, first down. A four-yard pick up. Now Rogers. The left side throw complete to Adams. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. 
Off the play fake to Jones. Here's Rodgers. Open man left side. It's a tight end, Tunyon. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Now left side on the swing pass. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling him almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Throwing again on second down. Rodgers, that's complete to Cobb. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 32-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Throwing is Rodgers. And not able to get it that time. He hit on six straight passes. Not there. Second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over in your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Rodgers now to throw. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantlin. And they will not be in stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. The completion good for only six. And that will bring up four. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. He hauls it in. Valdez Scantling for the Packers touchdown. Marquez Valdez Scantling, 26 yards. And the Packers are an extra point away from tying this game here on the fourth. And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Now Crosby for the point after. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And the result, a Green Bay score. the kicks away taken at the goal line and he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20 and now out comes 
comes Minnesota. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Here's second and a yard. They run it again with Cook. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. The Vikings on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. They're up against a third and one situation. On the carry, it's Cook. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. I was used to joke with my teammates who carried the ball. But we got in these situations, and they were carrying us home. I used to tell them, boy, you guys just look like Paul Bunyan, just growing stronger, bigger, tougher. And all night long, he's carried this team. He has indeed. Everything magnified right now, a huge third down conversion. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. We got three, we got three, fellas, we got three. Off the play fake, Cousins. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And that's caught inside the 30. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? Got caught it or ran it. But how about the elements of going to making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route will run, and the football right on the money. On first down, Cook. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. On oh, second down, it's Cook again. Even with that broken tackle, he'll be brought down short of the 15. Given four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Now, what's the thinking here? Because a touchdown would be nice, but you've ensured yourself a chance at three in the lead, so how worried are you about the six? You're not very worried about if you're confident in your kicker. And if you got a kicker who can put it through the post, you feel really good about trying to bleed that clock down. In an ideal scenario, your kicker puts it through the post as the clock hits zeros. And Cook was fighting for it, but I don't think he got there. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And they're looking at fourth down now in this tie ball game. The kick by Joseph is good. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give him the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they score too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. Joseph now. 
now to kick this one away. The return man is Hill. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. So now Rodgers in the pack. Down 20 to 17. A minute 52 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Back to throw, Rodgers. It's complete, Lazard. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. First down now, but that clock rolling. To throw is Rodgers. He gets it over the middle to Cobb. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. Haven't heard much from him all night, but welcome to the party, making his presence felt in a big way. They've kept him under wraps all night long, but boy, did he find a great time to bust out. Now Rodgers. That's complete to Lazard. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. They had two straight first downs, now a gain of nine to set up second and one. Rodgers to throw. Open man, here is Cobb. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A good-looking drive for the Packers so far. It's a first down. Well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as to understand where they are in the field? down carry by Jones down right around the 25 Sheldon Richardson there to make the play I know they got a little yardage there but I'm not sure their investment is right they're still running the football and I'm not sure there's enough time to continue to do that Rodgers in control as he hurries his guys to the line the Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. They'll look to throw. He's to the 10. Got a man. That's Lazard. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. way to get the lead here of course with a touchdown and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal back to throw over the middle that's caught by Adams and they'll get this from the eight to the five pick up a three three yards the game there second down now the Packers gonna burn their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. And the 
14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. Fitting for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. This game played out this is exactly how it should end going to overtime because neither one got an advantage today it's a little teaching moment here overtime rules remind us how this goes partner okay so in the past we had sudden death first team to score wins but no longer now if the team receives the ball scores a touchdown they win the game if they kick a field goal though or don't score the other team gets a possession and after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Taking it about the one. And he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further. Now come the Vikings. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Not a bad idea to start overtime, feed the hot hand. And understand that when you're feeding that hot hand, everyone else is pretty much in agreement on it. You know, a team looks at their game and says, all right, who's playing really well? Let them touch the football, and we'll do our job to help him along. Second down, they go right back to Cook. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll run on first down. It's Cook. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. The first throw in overtime now for Cousins. The open man is Westbrook. And they'll get it out just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Play fake. Cousins. Open man here is Conklin. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. In your face. Where's the hot 
Laundry on the field. This is going to be a false start on the offense. Sometimes you have to slow things down a little bit when things get heated. The cadence has to be slow and deliberate at times to make sure your team's ready to go. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Back to the ground, Cook. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just run and hit. Yeah, he's got to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. Well, good start for him under center here in overtime, now 3-3. Three of three. And this is where you have to know who you have playing quarterback. You've got a confident thrower right now, someone who's taking care of the ball, but not being timid as well, and is moving the team downfield. That opens up your playbook and allows you to dial up some big shots if you want them. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. Can we just take that run and turn it into a kind of a clip and save? Because that tells you everything you need to know about this drive. They've been moving the ball awfully well. From the 35 on second down, Cousins. And this is incomplete. <laughs> Opening drive of overtime and now facing a third down and six. Big play coming up. To throw his Cousins. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Well, Zedarius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. And any offensive lineman getting ready to try and block Zedarius Smith knows he's in for a long ball game. 26 sacks in his first two years in Green Bay, including 12 and a half in 2020. Here's Jordan Berry now, on for a very important punt here in overtime. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. And now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? One is done, now part two. No gain on the play there, second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Second down, another shot for Jones. And he's taken down. It's a gain of three from the 17 to the 20. You got it. You got it. I got it. What can Rodgers do now with his drive? Let's it fly deep for Cobb. And got his man complete. And he is going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, in overtime, I think Coach is always wondering where's that magic line for my kicker. They're already in field goal range after that big play. I'm glad you 
you brought that up because that magic line can change throughout the game. It's constantly being updated by teams. It starts with pregame. Okay, how, how do you feel? As the game goes on, they might ask him again. Still feel that same number? Is it a different number? Right hash, left hash? What do you need? And that goes into the play calling in OT. On first down, it's Jones. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Two yards that time, a stark contrast from the big chunk on the previous play. And that carry probably not so much for yardage just to get the spot that you want to kick the field goal. And any yardage you game there is really kind of gravy. And this just becomes what my old coach used to say, get into position to be in position. <laughs> and that's what they want, the right spot for their kicker to line up the field goal. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Again, it's Jones. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys, poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free and protect the end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. Oh, and that's so close to being intercepted. That could have been a big turnover in overtime if he had held on. Instead, though, it is still fourth down. They use their second time out here. Perfect three for three in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now you know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. <laughs> 